my name is Omar. I'm from the class of 2023, and uh, I'm in publications class. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, nice to meet you, Omar. I am Ayana Yonasaka Ruiz. Um, I am class of 2009, yeah. so I graduated 14 years ago. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Am I right? I'm not sure. Quite yeah. a while ago. <laughs> so it's good to be back, yeah. Uh, can you describe like your dance training background? So I'll, I'm a professional contemporary dancer, I would say, yeah. if I had to put a genre, um, choreographer and uh, dance educator. So I started dancing when I was seven yeah. and this was in Sapporo. So I'm born and raised in Sapporo. Yeah. And um, when I was seven, I started dancing. Um, and I specifically asked my parents to put me in a modern dance class. Yeah. Not jazz, not hip hop, not ballet. I kind of wanted to try this genre, which clicked immediately. And that's where I started my training. Started off as kind of an after school thing, but it, soon enough I was like pretty serious about it. So yeah. then I continued throughout uh, my years in Sapporo. So that's all the way until 2009 through, you know, elementary school, junior high school, high school. So yeah. the training was at, um, at these studios, a few different studios in Sapporo. Yeah. Then once I graduated in 2009, I went to San Francisco State University, which is where I decided to major in dance. And it's a state yeah. school, so, yeah. you know, I mean, it wasn't like a dance school, anything like that. Yeah. And I think I, I did that really to kind of have a backup a little bit. Like, yeah. what if dance doesn't work out? I think it was always kind of this fear of you know, especially studying so much in yeah. HIS and I was, you know, I was going to go to college, but I wanted to go for dance. And there was a yeah. part of me that I was like, is this going to be OK? Is this going to be the right decision? I'm not quite sure. So decided to go to a state school so I would do, you know, other general yeah. education studies alongside being in part of the dance department. But quickly pretty much realized like that's really what I wanted to do. So I really, really stuck with the dance major. And so a lot of my strong, strong training I think comes in the four years actually at San Francisco State yeah. University. I had excellent um, teachers who, in other words, like whipped me into shape a little <laughs> bit um, during the four years. Um, and then in 2013, I graduated. So I would say the training was up until then and then after graduation, it's pretty much I'm on my own. So I would, you know, take classes on my own and kind yeah. of keep up my technique from there. So yeah. that's kind of the gist of that's yeah, cool. the background. Yeah. yeah. If anything, how do you think HIS affected your career or how you became into that path? Mm, yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, HIS taught me a lot of a lot of different things. But one of the really great takeaways for me, because I wasn't directly dancing, at, you know, at HIS, yeah. although I was just <laughs> laughing with my friends the other day that HIS had a, a lot of opportunities for <laughs> to show talent, I think. Yeah. When I was going to school, there were, you know, just a bunch of different events. Um, and at every event, there's always that kind of this opportunity for students to showcase their talent. Yeah. And uh, I remember I was I was laughing with my friends. I would remember I would always like jump onto these opportunities to see if I could dance or even sing or, you know, be on stage. So in that sense, there was always kind of this opportunity for me to be confident on stage and really like yeah. show because that's part of being a performer. But that yeah. aside, I think with HIS, multitasking was a huge, huge thing to be able to do. The workload at HIS when I was there was pretty intense. Like, yeah. thank you all the teachers, but, <laughs> you know, I thank you now. It was, yeah. but it was a lot of work, at least for me personally. Yeah. Um, and I would say my fellow graduates would agree, but just being able to time manage all these different assignments and I, I 
feel like I was just constantly doing homework. But on top of that, you know, like I said, I was taking dance classes outside of school as part of my training, yeah. earlier training. Um, I also was also part of the um, volleyball team. And so I think all these different things, and at times it was pretty overwhelming, but trying yeah. to really manage and time manage, compartmentalize, really figure out what needs to be prioritized and, you know, where can the a little bit of procrastination come or where do I give myself a break or those kind of thinking came in such handy when I went to college and really had to focus on, you know, training as a dancer. And so reinforcing that in college, I mean, essentially it kind of solidified how I would manage my time as a professional dancer because yeah. at the end of the day once I was you know out of school the organization of time continued because I would be um, you know teaching multiple classes I would get performance opportunities I would also get um, opportunities to choreograph and put on shows and you know all these different timings and deadlines and managing all of that I would say was the key takeaway from HIS for me that carried on to, into my career as a dancer so long story short <laughs> yeah. yeah um and what inspired you to become a dance teacher like because there's a lot of different paths you can go with dance what specifically inspired you to become a dance I teacher actually I really appreciate you saying that, yeah. that there's a lot of different paths that can be taken as a dancer because I think when I went to San Francisco State University and decided, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna study dance, yeah. I think even I wasn't sure what kind of path I was gonna go on. It felt like, okay, you're gonna become a dancer, you're gonna audition, you're gonna go on stage and you're gonna perform. But yeah. then like I realized, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many different things I could do with dance and teaching was one of them. Yeah. But um, what inspired me to teach? I think, I wanna say it was my junior year at San Francisco State. One of my professors said, hey, there's an opportunity to assist or lead a dance class at a nearby elementary school. And I was, I think I just kind of very lightly accepted it. Like, okay, like sure, I'll give it a try. Yeah. And really liked it and I was also being told like, yeah, teaching is gonna be a, a huge, huge way to continue your dance career. So yeah. I started to look into it a little bit more. And um, when I graduated, somebody who went to my school was hired as a office manager at a ballet studio. Yeah. And this person got in touch with me and mentioned that they're looking for instructors. And at that point, I really didn't have much experience, but I thought I would throw myself into the situation. I was like, yeah, yeah sure, I wanna come in, give it a try. And like, absolutely loved it the more I did it. And that's kind of what inspired me, how it inspired me to get into it. But now that I'm talking about it, I'm realizing, I think how I fell into it, you know, being in the classroom and being like, oh my gosh, I really love this, yeah. still continues. Thankfully, like <laughs> fortunately, like I think every time I come into a classroom and I'm teaching dance, I'm like, okay, yes, like this is what I wanna do. And honestly, yeah. coming back to age, HIS and uh, so I had six weeks with K through first, six weeks with second through fifth graders, yeah. six week, six weeks with um, some teens and preschoolers. And honestly, like getting back into that and because I had a big break, I came back to Sapporo last August. So I've yeah. had a pretty big break from teaching seven eight months maybe of, yeah. of a break from teaching and so i'm just realizing talking to you omar i'm just like oh yeah like once i came back i was really feeling like so grateful and i'm like okay yes i like do really love to do this so yeah. i'm sorry my answers get really long i'm feeling <laughs> no, really passionate about this it's good <laughs> okay um what made you want to come back to sapporo where you were born and back to HIS because mm. you told me you went to San Francisco, yeah. lived there for a while. Yeah. I get this question a lot. Uh, mm. I think particularly because maybe when I tell folks San Francisco, I get the reaction of like, wow, you're in San Francisco. Like what? Yeah. What made you come back? 
to Sapporo. But San Francisco was, um, I mean, amazing. The experience I had there was life changing. It, it changed yeah. me forever and really not just that, it just it made me who I am right now yeah. today. But I, um, I would say few years before COVID. So 2020, like 2017, I started yeah. kind of questioning like, am I gonna stay here? Am I gonna continue what I'm doing right now? How do I grow? You know, if I decide to stay here, how do I grow while still remaining in the same city? And so I started to have this question and actually already had this interest of possibly moving back to Japan. Bigger visions like, opening a studio, what if I, you know, take my teaching experience here and at least try it out. And so I started actually seriously considering it, you know, three years before COVID. So it was kind of brewing in my mind for a while. And I would say once COVID hit, it just kind of did this switch for me where I felt like all of a sudden there was this window of opportunity, everything paused and stopped and I was able to relook at my consideration that had been brewing for three, year, three years because honestly, I was so busy. I was so busy in San Francisco and during the three years that I was considering it, even though I had envisioned maybe making the move, I mean, I want to say it was almost impossible. I made no room to actually make it happen. And so I think once COVID hit, I had this window, I had this pause, a blank, if you will. I suddenly felt like, oh, this must be the time to make this happen. And so um, I wasn't married then, but um, my partner back then and I had talked about, you know, should we do this? Should we move to Japan? And thankfully my partner, he's very much open to the idea. And so the more we considered, the more it seemed right to make this change, like why not now, let's do it now. And so like a year after 2020, my husband and I, we got married and then we were like, okay, let's do it. So. That's kind of how it happened after a year, right? A year after that in 2022. Yeah, that's when we made the move. So new adventure. Yay, everybody!